Thank you for tuning in to this short 15 minute midweek podcast looking at ways to stay physically, mentally and spiritually healthy during the seasons that we're in. I think this is an important subject and uh, the first thing I want to say is that the way we're created by God and for God is there is a connection between our physical well-being, our mental well-being and our spiritual well-being and the Holy Spirit is willing and able to give us wisdom about practical things, about our bodies, about our mind and our thoughts, as well as overtly spiritual things. So I want to divide this short presentation into three. Talk about physical health, mental health and spiritual health. And just a couple of tips or thoughts to help us stay healthy and to help us help other people as well. Let's start with physical health, our bodies. Our bodies are important to us and they're important to God. Um, it's interesting in Romans 12 verse 1 it says in view of God's mercies that is to say in the previous 11 chapters of Romans it talks about the incredible salvation we have in Christ the incredible blessing the incredible love of God and in view of all God's mercies the very first thing we're encouraged to do is to present our physical bodies to him as a living sacrifice so the physical body that we walk around in is an important Thing in God's eyes and in our eyes so take care of it and uh, sometimes the most spiritual things are practical things sometimes the simple things are the deep things some Christians are more spiritual than God and I say that a wee bit tongue-in-cheek uh, comedian Michael Jr. said some Christians are oversaved they they won't eat a pizza unless it's delivered and, and the point is this, sometimes it's the ordinary, normal things we do in life uh, show, a, show what real faith is, what real trust in God is. So two things about our bodies to keep us healthy is this. And this is so basic and so not rocket science. I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but it's important to say this. The first one is this. During these days and weeks, make sure you move and get some exercise. Now, exercise doesn't have to be running marathons. It could be just out the back garden, doing a bit of gardening, doing a bit of housework, doing some of the exercises that some of us have learnt through the Kingsway Wellness Clinic or whatever. But exercise is important. Three or four times a week, every day if you can, 15 minutes to 20 minutes daily or almost daily exercise. Um, there is a study, our studies plural, have shown that if we can get the nation exercising and moving, we will save more lives than getting the nation to stop smoking. That's how important movement is and exercise is. So don't devalue that. And the Holy Spirit can give us practical wisdom how we can do some creative exercise in our homes, share ideas with one another, encourage people to get exercise and get moving. And the other thing under the physical health, again, this is not rocket science or brain surgery, but be aware of some of the comfort seeking behavior we do when we are locked in. We have a tendency to overeat, over drink or overdo uh, you know, too much uh, screen time or whatever. And be aware of the dangers of that and set yourself some disciplines. By all means, have a treat once a week. Um, and I'm looking forward to my chocolate treat on Saturday. Um, but be careful. The devil is a dirty fighter and he will tempt us during these times and he will harass us during these times. So take, take good care of your physical health for your sake and for other people's sake at this time. Uh, so in terms of mental health, our thought life and our mindset and our mental health is also extremely important to God. And I would just reiterate three of the things that have been brought out through public health. And I even think William and Kate have been talking about this. Three ways of staying mentally healthy. These are good practical bits of advice. First one is this, stay in social contact with people. Now, obviously, if we, we, we can't go out, we can still ring people, phone people, text people, message people, use WhatsApp, Zoom and all these other things. And we may have to be creative in how we stay in contact with people. 
But this is, it is very, very important to stay in contact with people, to not become isolated or lonely. And uh, so stay in touch. And I'm very, very encouraged that there does seem to be an epidemic of staying in touch with each other through social media and so on. It is important. And as we've said as a church before, we say it again, please remember people that you don't necessarily normally contact or phone. Remember them, especially if they live alone, especially if they're isolated, especially as they may be struggling with mental health problems. Social contact, very important. Let's keep doing that. The second thing that came through is it's important to have routine. And this is important, especially if you're working at home or you have the kids at home with the schooling um, or, or you're on your own totally. It is helpful to have some flexible, of course, routines built into your day and into your week. Get up at the same time, go to bed at the same time. Have times when you do choose to do something like watch television or eat and then choose to do other things. Break your day up and you'll find that will help to keep you healthy. The third thing that has been advised for the nation, and it is a good idea, this is a good time to take up a new interest or a new hobby. You'll maybe learn a new language, learn an instrument, learn a bit of cooking, a bit of gardening. For me, I'm starting to, to use social media in ways I never did before. Uh, and so this can be an enlarging time, a growing time to find a new interest, a new hobby. It is important and that could even be an investment for the future when this time is over. But one thing I did want to isolate under mental well-being and mental health is that there is something that can come against people during times of like this. And that is this feeling of being useless, this feeling of a lack of being useful and meaninglessness. And so what, what I want to say to you is that. Uh, that please don't underestimate how important some things are to give you that sense of satisfaction, that sense of fulfillment, the sense of meaning and the sense of usefulness. Because there's a limit to what we can do. We can feel useless. But here's, here's a few tips, a few helpful things. First of all, taking good care of yourself is important, not just for you, but for others. Staying safe. Honouring the public health of advice is helping other people, whether we realise that not or not, or feel that or not. So don't devalue that. The other thing I would say is, in reaching, if every single person in the church reached out to one or two people, not necessarily hundreds of people, but if every single one of us reached out to one elderly person, or one lonely person, or one practical act of kindness a week, if we were all doing that, there would be an incredible impact. Sometimes we think to be useful, we have to come up with grand, spectacular plans and, and make a big sound and trumpet about what we're doing to help people. But if every single person helped one or two, that would make a huge difference. Don't devalue helping in a quality way a small number of key people, whether it's within our families, our neighbours, or further recede. Oh, another thing I jotted down to counteract this feeling of uselessness is those who work and pay your taxes. Praise God for that. Praise God that we live in a country where our taxes are being used at last more and more for some important things to provide for the National Health Service. Um, and finally, under dealing with uselessness, please do not underestimate prayer. Prayer is a major key. It really is. And I know as Christians we officially believe prayer is important. But actually many of us don't really think that or believe that. And so we need to underline that. Praying for the nation. Praying for the government. Praying for one another. Praying for the saints. Praying for unreached people groups. Praying for opportunities to touch people's lives. Uh, prayer is key. Prayer is an important use of time. And I think many of us are finding that we are drawing closer to God during this time. We are praying more at this time. We are reflecting more at this time. That is time well spent. And as I said on Sunday, this season will pass. And I believe that some of the investment of what we do spiritually, the investment of learning a new hobby, the investment of reflecting and thinking through things, 
and what's really important that if that can last on the other side of this it will benefit us and other people so mental health is important physical health is important and we can say a few more about things about that in future podcasts god willing last of all spiritual health and i i believe there's two things are happening two things god is doing during this season don't miss it don't 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 be don't don't think this is not important the first one is this he is awakening his people and his church to a deeper uh, experience and knowledge of him he, he's doing a work of purification he is he has shown us that um, that he's helping to set us free from things that we depended on much more than we thought he's setting us free from things that have maybe controlled our lives or cluttered our lives we've become over busy over dependent on things much much more than we realized and I hope I brought that out in one of the talks I did to a couple of weeks ago when we saw how God delivered Israel and, and, and dealt with the Egyptians remember he turned the Nile into blood and there was the plague of frogs and, and it caused the people at that time to realize that what they depended on was not worth anything and this new realization of dependence on God, dependence on his word, dependence on his spirit is actually a very positive thing. My prayer is it will last when this season ends. And the other thing God is doing across the world in many people's lives, and we're hearing stories and testimonies with this, is that many people are turning to God. Many people are, are praying who weren't praying. Many people are are, are are open to the gospel, open to making peace with God and peace with other people through this time. And so we need to be alert to that. And I could tell you some stories of, of things I have seen happen in in one or two lives, and which is very dramatic. And it's happening at this time and in this season. And again, my prayer is that that will last. The fruit will last. And so staying healthy physically, exercise, and be careful with unhealthy, comfort-seeking behavior. Mentally, remember the basic things, routine, uh, um, a new hobby, social contact, and how to counteract that feeling of uselessness. And most important, stay healthy spiritually and stay, stay close to God and be an encouragement to one another in these things. Many thanks.